The madness is over. Unfortunately, we're done dancing. The GCU men's basketball season comes to an end in round two of the NCAA tournament last night. We'll talk about it and more in this edition of Lopes Lately. I'm Bella Olage. And I'm Sierra Ness. Welcome to your go-to source for the latest at Grand Canyon University, Lopes Lately. Today we're talking about Gabe McLaughlin's new podcast, a soccer player obsessed with garbage trucks, how to prep for graduation, and what's happening this week on campus. But first, after an impressive season, including 15-0 record at home, back-to-back -back WAC championships, and our first ever win in March Madness, the Lopes call it a season. Maddie Hart joins us now to recap it all. The GCU men's basketball team fought hard at the Orleans Arena in Las Vegas. After winning against Seattle U, the number one seed beat the UT Arlington Mavericks. In a gritty second half, the Lopes secured their conference championship over the Mavericks with an 89-74 victory. Not only did GCU bring home the title of champions, reigning WAC Player of the Year Tyon Grant Foster earned the WAC Most Outstanding Player Award. With 22 points, 9 rebounds, and 3 steals in the championship game against UT Arlington, Tyon proved he is a force to be reckoned with. Joining Grant Foster in the spotlight are teammates Ray Harrison and Luke War. Harrison's average of 18 points and 3.5 assists per game, and War's shooting percentage at 57, contributed heavily to GCU's win in Vegas. This victory marks Grand Canyon's third NCAA tournament spot in four years, showcasing their dominance in the WAC. We hoop at GCU, man. We hoop at GCU. And the Lopes went dancing. From the start, GCU was making headlines. College basketball expert Andy Katz ranked the Havocs as one of the top 10 student sections in the country. So when it came time to hit the court this past weekend, Lopes fans brought their A game. Facing off against St. Mary's, the GCU men's team showed no mercy. With a stunning 75-66 victory in the first round of the NCAA tournament, the Lopes shattered expectations in the sports world. With the Lopes dominating defensively, racking up nine blocked shots and eight steals, the Gales were left reeling. GCU broke down one of the nation's best defenses in the second half, unleashing a staggering 47 points. But Ray Harrison ignited this shift, setting the stage for consecutive three-pointers from senior guard Tyon Grant Foster, who scored 22 points, and junior guard Colin Moore with 10 points. Despite the win over the Gales, the dance has come to an end. After a hard-fought battle against Alabama, GCU lost in a 72-61 game Sunday night. And although GCU lost, the Lopes held the Crimson Tide to nearly 20 points below their usual scoring output. Grant Foster was once again a standout performer, showcasing his skills with an impressive 29 points and 8 rebounds. But despite a clutch basket by Grant Foster in the second half, the Lopes ultimately fell short. But this season is one for the history books. Led by head coach Bryce Drew, the Lopes finished this year with 30 wins and multiple achievements in the Western Athletic Conference. We can't wait to see where the Lopes take us next season. Until then, I'm Maddie Hart for Lopes Lately. Thanks, Maddie. A heartbreaking end to the team's historic season. We're definitely looking forward to seeing how far the Lopes make it next year. No matter how far we make it, one key player won't be there. Gabe McLaughlin, who played his last game as a Lope last night. His eligibility is up, but you don't have to say goodbye to Gabe. Right, because he's partnering with another player, Noah Amenhauser, on a new podcast. Reporter Andrea Turisk has the story. Uh, you'll never take away, away the very fight for you, Lord. You know them from the court, but now Gabe McLaughlin and Noah Amenhauser are teaming up on a crossover to podcasting. So we just hope people are curious to, first of all, check out the podcast, but most importantly, you know, find out who Jesus is. Full-time ministry is a plan for both players. Gabe, who plays forward for the Lopes, graduates next month. Noah is a freshman center. While they both know their athlete status will draw listeners, they hope their perspective on faith can impact the masses. Like we're just trying to give our perspective of it and how it changes in our lives and how we grow and just trying to hope that that resonates with people in a way because like we're not perfect, but we serve a perfect God. And it's like, that's what our message needs to be. And it's just like, if that reaches people and that's all we want to do in life is reach those. Reaching the biggest platform in college basketball, March Madness is one thing but these two see well beyond. 
it's not our message and we believe we are just, you know, vessels that God's sharing a message through us. And maybe it could be something that helps impact you or even people you love. And I think one of the coolest things that we could do in this life is that. That is the ultimate goal for hopefully any believer. And it's like with this, it gives us a platform to hopefully reach people and have that opportunity to have someone with open arms in heaven. You can catch Gabe and Noah's podcast on any streaming service. Just search up God's Big Toe. Kind of an interesting name, and you'll have to check out their podcast to see what God's Big Toe is all about. I'm Andrea Turris, reporting for Lopes Lately. The Arizona presidential preference election results are in. With a turnout of almost 40% of Maricopa County voters, GCU offered a vital opportunity for community members to exercise their democratic right to vote. This is the first time the university has opened its doors free voting from young adults to seasoned voters. The GCU voting precinct welcome individuals from all walks of life, fostering a sense of community and shared responsibility. As voters look ahead to the election in November, many here on campus are concerned about a date much closer on the calendar, graduation. Of course, another crucial decision looms there too, navigating the path to employment. Thankfully, as reporter Ashley Spang tells us, there's a ton of help right here on campus. It's that time of year, Lopes, the pressure is on. There is only five weeks left until graduation, but lucky for you, GCU has resources all over campus to help you transition into post-grad life. We utilize an incredible career management system called Career Connections, and we can help our students learn how to navigate that tool. Asia, along with many other dedicated faculty members, are committed to ensuring your success. From resume workshops to networking events, there are resources all over campus to get you ready for life after college. Annually, we're sitting down with the colleges talking about certain events. What type of events would they like to see occur on campus? What are their days and times that will work well, locations? Career Services here at GCU collaborates with every department to discuss and plan events to benefit students. Lopes Launch Senior Send-Off is one of many events coming up and will take place April 2nd from 3 to 5 p.m. on the Quad Lawn. That's going to be an opportunity to engage with employers along with different departments. There'll also be um, an opportunity for headshots and prizes and we are here for you so please come out. Her campus is one of many clubs at GCU setting up and organizing events to benefit their members. Recently inviting Cassandra Thompson, a career coach who shared the importance of having a good resume. Your resume is something everybody's going to want to see. Uh, when you apply for a job, what do you turn in your resume? So we got to make sure it's in good shape so that you're ready to apply. Cassandra offered many tips and tricks to the club to help them develop the perfect resume. Continuously update your resume. This is a lifelong skill. Well, I'm going to head home and work on my resume, but for now, I'm Ashley Spang reporting for Lopes Lately. While some students are still figuring out what to do, one freshman here knows exactly what he wants to do. But it's probably not what you would expect. Diego Valise plays on our men's soccer team, but he has his eye on something off the pitch. Lexi Lambert has the story. I would get up at anywhere between 2.45 and 4 a.m. depending on what day of the week it was. Students get up early to go for a run, hit the gym, or for some, end their nights in the early morning. But freshman Diego Valise starts his day off helping the garbage man. When I met my first driver, it was around the age of five years old. And my parents still remember the first time I ever saw a truck. They were actually outside, I believe, getting me to try to kick a soccer ball. And the first driver I ever saw, uh, Mike Coda, who I still know today and still drives in Tucson and we still keep in touch, um, pulled up and started doing recycling in my neighborhood. And from there, it was, it was love at first sight. Playing on the Division I soccer team as right back, studying business management, and playing in a mariachi band all come with lots of opportunities, but he has one goal in mind. My dream job is to either be a residential driver or a commercial driver for Republic Services. And then hopefully as my time with the company progresses, I want to uh, progress into being either a route manager or an operations supervisor with a division. I'm pretty sure in the future, Diego will be my boss, you know? 
Robert Diaz is the main Republic Services trash driver at GCU. He was the first person Diego met when he arrived at college, and it didn't take long for them to form a connection. He has just been a blessing for me. You know, he has changed the way that I think about life. He's, he's made me let go of the past. He's taught me to be more flexible with myself and with others. I mean, just the experience that he has and the knowledge. It's not just the people that Diego loves about this industry. It's also the trucks. I have something called perfect pitch, so I hear sounds in things that don't usually that people don't usually hear sounds in. I can hear notes and pitches in a bunch of different everyday sounds and for me, you know, hearing a garbage truck coming down the street is is like a live concert. Now, maybe the weekly rumble of the garbage truck coming down your street will sound more like a symphony thanks to Diego. I'm Lexi Lambert with Lopes Lately. Wow, what a sweet story. I also love how the driver was looking forward to Diego being his boss one day. Yeah, it's so cool to see how Diego's passion is going to lead him somewhere amazing. Definitely. Bella, did you know GCU is the only college in the country with a skate park on campus? I did not know that. It's crazy to see how skate culture makes up a huge part of campus culture. In fact, GCU's skateboarding club hosted the first intercollegiate invitational skate competition. College skate teams from all over Arizona, like NAU, U of A, and ASU, were there to compete. Apart from skating, there were lots of other activities to enjoy. Island Boys Pizza Company was serving wood fire pizza, and there was also a live band, Shasta Mountain. While some seek to defy gravity on the skateboard, others aim to articulate the foundations of their faith. Next, Kiana Jabaransari tells us about a club dedicated to helping Christians effectively communicate their beliefs, the Defenders Club. GCU's campus offers many opportunities for students and believers to grow their faith in Christ. For one club on campus, its members are taught to not only grow their faith, but to defend it. The GCU Defenders Club is an apologetics group that equips club members with sound reasonings for Christianity. At their meetings, members practice and refine the art of peaceful disagreement, a skill much needed in today's divided world. Club president Dylan Irely had this need in mind when joining the GCU Defenders Club. The club is a great experience, but we do it for a reason. Um, there's a verse in the Bible, 1 Peter 3.15, uh, which talks about how we must be ready to give an answer in, uh, with respect and gentleness and for a defense of the hope that is in us. And this club is about helping you accomplish that. And it's really great for arming you to have the difficult discussions with people who disagree with you. In order to build a strong defense, the club delves into the study of other religions by understanding their beliefs from a historical perspective and identifying differences and contradictions with Christianity. The more I learn, the more confident I am that I have made the right choice by following Jesus. If you're interested in building stronger foundations for your faith, the GCU Defenders Club meets in room 202 of the CCOB Monday nights at 7.30. I'm Kiana Jabrinsari with Love Slately. Basketball may be over, but we're not slowing down. There's a lot going on on campus this week. The College of Arts and Media Theater Department is closing out the spring semester with its final production, Tuck Everlasting. You can still catch performances on Friday and Saturday. Remember, tickets are free for students. And it's Holy Week, and Easter's on Sunday. If you're on campus and have dining dollars left, you can enjoy brunch at the Lopes Training Table on Sunday from 8 a.m. to 2 p.m. And it's also the end of Women's History Month, Bella, and we've had a first in Lopes Lately history with this broadcast. Our first all-female on-camera production. Yes, thanks to Maddie Hart, Andrea Tursk, Ashley Spang, Lexi Lambert, Kiana Jabber-Ansari, and the rest of our crew for a great show today. Thanks for watching. I'm Sierra Ness. And I'm Bella Olage. We'll see you next time on Lopes Lately.